The Bible says, Woe to you who, who create iniquitous decrees. Let us not be pro-life. Let's not regulate when, where, and how we can kill children. Right now there's 13,000 kids in foster care waiting to be adopted. 30,000 churches, 70,000 pastors. Why can we not adopt these kids? Why is it gays and lesbians adopting these kids? We don't adopt these kids because we want bigger families. We adopt these kids because they need loving homes, not gay and lesbian homes. Children, ask your parents, why is child sacrifice? Why is murder legal? And what dad and mom are you doing to make it illegal? Kids, ask your parents why we don't make abortion illegal. I pray, <clears throat> I pray that your children will not grow up to be as evil and wicked as their parents in this land. Parents who do not work to make abortion illegal. We are asking people to repent of their apathy. Right now there's 13,000 kids in foster care waiting to be adopted. Most all of them will age out. Many will be adopted by gays and lesbians. But the church is silent in their action. The church is not adopting these kids. We have over 30,000 pastors, over 70, I'm sorry, over 70,000 pastors, over 30,000 churches. Why can we not adopt these 13,000 kids? Why do we ignore these kids in foster care? How can we call ourselves the bride of Christ? We're not picking up our crosses. We're not doing the work. Repent. How can child sacrifice be the number one cause of death in our land? How can that be possible? I plead with you people who follow Jesus Christ to re-look at yourself, your life, and see if you have picked up your cross, if you are doing the work. How do we have 13,000 kids in foster care waiting to be adopted? 30,000 churches, 70,000 pastors. How you doing, sir? Hey. Hey, Steve, I'm Todd. Hey, good to meet you, man. Good to meet you. So, hey. can you tell me what, what's up here? Yeah, did you get our literature? Mm -hmm, I didn't. Here, here's, okay. uh, okay. so we went to the Texas Republican Party convention, okay. and we just called them to repent with okay. that. Um, so we said, stop regulating abortion. Okay. It's murder. We don't say when, where, and how we can kill babies. Okay. Because you know, the Bible says, woe to you men who make iniquitous decrees bad okay. laws right uh -huh. evil laws so we need to abolish it we need to make it illegal okay right? so, so how would you propose to do that well first we walked around and gave them those and we called right. them to repent uh -huh. all right there was like eight of us oh, okay. that did that okay uh -huh. guess what the number one plank of the texas republican party is now uh maybe pro-life no abolition to make it illegal pro-life is wicked and evil uh -huh. I mean, pro-life is horrible right because well, because it regulates how, when, and where you can murder oh, babies. Nobody's ever okay. put forth a pro-life bill to make abortion illegal, ever. Okay. You know? Okay. So, um, you put this down. Sure. I don't want to do it while they're <laughs> started their, they started 11. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not trying to interrupt their service. Okay. I'm just trying to talk to them when they come in and out. Sure. So, um, so yeah, the pro-life bill is a compromise. Like okay. we have people that murder babies and then we have Satan's counterfeit to what Christianity should look like, okay. which is pro-life because they, they never put forth the bill to make abortion illegal, all right? So we actually put, we the Republican, um, Dem or Republicans convention made it their number one plank. So when we go to the federal government, okay. all right, the federal convention, they say, okay, Texas, what, what's going on? They say, okay. number one, we need to make abortion illegal in our land. Okay. There's only eight people who did that, like eight or nine, okay. that's it, right? Okay, so that's that's one way, all right. So um, and then, do you but, feel like the church here is not doing enough? Oh, or? definitely not doing enough. In fact, it actually opposes abolition. Pat Fallon, who goes to this church here, state representative. Um, he goes to this church. Yeah, he goes to this church. Okay, so, I didn't it's so, a big church. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> so here's what happened, right? So the um, they said. Uh, so why did he oppose? Well, here, here's what happened first. Okay, they made the, the number one plank, all right? And then they came up with a bill to make abortion illegal, okay? Pat Fallon said, no, we can't make it illegal. We can't put women in jail for killing their babies. We can't do that. You know, our culture's not ready for that, okay. you know? 
So we just need to incrementally do it. So he helped make sure, even though there was 11 representatives that co-signed the bill oh, okay. to do it, this one actually worked to make it so we couldn't even vote on it if the people want to make it illegal or not, okay. right? And the pastor who, who resides over the prayer meetings mm -hmm. um, for the representatives here in Texas, this pastor, um, he's fine with that. You know, because you guys go to a 501c3, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not allowed to be political. You're not allowed right. to say right. what laws, you know, can you imagine that? Can you imagine you guys follow a, a, a contract with man that says you guys are not allowed to be political? Where God calls us to take dominion over the land, right? To control the land, to but defend the innocent. He also calls us to honor government, right? What's that? He also calls us, calls us to honor government, Romans 13. Yeah, but, you know, it was legal to kill Jews mm -hmm. and you had to kill Jews and it was okay. legal to own black men. So we don't honor government when it opposes God, sure. okay. you know? So all we're saying is, is like, relook at our lives. Like what does Christianity look like in a culture where child sacrifice is the number one cause of death? Does it look like, well, we pray a lot? Okay. No, because we're men who stand at the gates. We're supposed to defend the innocent, you know? We're supposed to be a voice for the voices. Like that's legal. Yeah. Isn't that sick? Yeah. And, and you know what? At the abortion clinics, there's Catholics out there works protest, you mean, or? no trying to talk women out of having babies uh -huh. you know no. but trying to talk them out of having or out of, out of having abortions out of having abortions oh, okay right so there's some catholics right. out there praying but no protestants you know okay so but we need to be like but like my wife volunteered at the crisis pregnancy center for, right you know, five and that's good years, so. and she's and you guys have probably done other christian things right, right. but those things won't make abortion illegal because like if you if there is a million more crisis pregnancy centers those who want to kill their babies will kill them and those that want to um okay. you know go to a crisis pregnancy center will keep them right but we're saying that god you know like amos 5 if you read amos 5 it's scary because i mean amos 5 really says that though your prayers be many mm -hmm. i won't hear them okay. i hate your your festivals mm -hmm. and your meetings um your worship put it I, I don't i don't hear it first bring mercy and justice to the land and then bring your praise and sacrifice and your okay. prayers and i'll hear them what what was it what was going on at that time god's people like god's yeah. people what was going on at the time child sacrifice in the land and they weren't opposing it they weren't opposing it yeah that's what it was about same with jeremiah 7. jeremiah went and stood at the gates of the house okay in jeremiah 7 and he called the church to repent except they were so the temples kind of see you're ministering that same kind of prophetic voice right well, it's the spirit of God, okay. right? So it's not like I'm Jeremiah, because yeah. you know, there's no. I'm not like two thousand years old, three thousand years old, right? I'm not I'm that old. Your poop and <laughs> making lunch yeah. over, right? Okay. <laughs> the second okay. time we, uh, Larry brought that up today, because because what happened was, it, it's kind of hot out here, you know. Yeah. I'm not too bad, but if you just stand in the sun for a long time, so we went over here and sat in the shade, and your church came up and said, "That's our property. Get off our property," uh, and we're like, okay. "Look." I, you know, I have six kids out here. Can we just sit in the shade? They said, no, okay. you have to you have to get off, you know? Okay, and I, like you and have I, to be on the sidewalk or? And, well, from the sidewalk over is your guys' property. Okay. So, um, and we were sitting over there by the wall because in between services, it's a, there's a bit of a wait, you know? Sure. And it's hot, so we were just sitting over there. So what kind and, of response have you gotten from people? Oh, well, I've been doing this since like 2009. No way. Um, all over here. different churches okay. and yeah, in are California. You based here or are you yeah, I live in Little Elm. Okay. I live in Little Elm. Um, but uh, 2009, we had one abolitionist society and now we have well over, I don't know, probably 150. Okay. So we do all, all over the country. And like, we're not mad at you or hate you or like angry okay. at you. We don't hate the church. Like. I'm part of the church. You're part yeah. of the church. In fact, that isn't the church. You're yeah, the church. Yeah, I would agree. It's just a building. Yeah, it's just a building, you know. Right. And, you know, we've had people come out and go, you're standing on holy ground. And I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> you know, why are you worried about that? Look at look at what's going on. Because any culture where child sacrifice was legal, always, God always dealt with it very harshly in the Bible, you know. Yeah, that's true. I was reading Hosea this morning. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like Amos, Amos and Hosea. And you know, Amos isn't like hate the Jews. Right. He, he was saying like, look, man, God's upset with us. And he is yeah. upset with yeah. us too. Like how can we have um, 13,000 kids in foster care right now waiting to be adopted? There's 30,000 kids in foster care, but 13,000 of them, no parents. They're waiting to be adopted. And we have 30,000 churches, 70,000 pastors. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I mean, my wife's volunteer with CASA, if you know what that is. Yeah, I know what CASA is very much, yeah. yeah. But so still, I'm, you know, like, you know, if just like a third of the pastors 
in Texas adopted a kid, yeah, there wouldn't be any. Like, we don't need to help the kids in foster care. Foster care is, your wife knows this, foster care is very wicked. All right. It can be. In Maybe Texas, it, it well, bad. in Texas, it looks to defend itself. Okay. Because Come it believes, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, it believes that defending itself and them staying out of trouble, sure. oh yeah, will be able to help more kids. <laughs> See why? But they don't sure. put the kids yeah. first, so they pull them out of homes too soon because they're worried that they're going to be in trouble right. for not pulling them out. They leave them in homes too long right. that they shouldn't because they don't want to get sued. Well, you know? I think part of that's been the caseload of workers. If you look at CPS in Texas versus a lot of other states, and I know the legislature's trying to help. But my wife, when she would work with Casa, she'd be like, "Well, we don't need to do any of that. All we need to do is the Christians adopt them." Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I think that is kind of. <laughs> Why don't we do it? Yeah. We got an instant Christian. Yeah. We we can, you know, right now Texas we have thirteen thousand more Christians. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. But we sit in the pews in these beautiful churches and we live in these big beautiful homes with extra bedrooms and we watch football. <laughs> like sports, you want to yeah. see true religion? It's not here. <laughs> if I walked in here, I'm telling you, that's not true religion. That's not true praise. Well, one of my friends, he goes, I want to show you the largest church in the state of Alabama and you probably know what this is. <laughs> yeah. And so then, he's a Christian mm, professor in Alabama and he goes, here's our largest church. So I, yeah. I think the problem though, you know, I think a lot of the people here obviously are pro-life they're against yeah. abortion they no they're not no, they're not they're not against abortion they're pro-life but, but they're see, not against abortion how are they against it that's like saying a dam's breaking and they're like hey, i'm against that or a woman over there across the street's getting raped and you and i are sitting here going huh, i'm against that that's wrong but if you've taken action you know if you've given money to if you've worked at a crisis pregnancy center that does not help end abortion that is not standing against abortion. That's helping a woman that wants to keep her baby. Well, I guess we have to agree to disagree because I feel like, you know, I meet people today that have had babies instead of aborting because they've been to crisis pregnancy centers. And yeah, but here's what happens is every woman that goes to a crisis pregnancy center is considered a save. Most women don't want to, uh, to, okay, to abort their babies. Most of them actually do want to keep them. It's just right. they, you know, and there's a place that's going to help. So they go there. Right. It's 60,000 babies every year in Texas get aborted. And we're not talking about IVF, and we're not talking about Plan B, and oh, we're not okay. talking about abortifacient pills that you can take in a month. Right. You know, I mean, we're just talking about surgical abortions, 60,000 every single year, number one cause of death. And people aren't standing against it. Yeah. Filling baby bottles full of money to give to a crisis pregnancy center will never make abortion illegal. Yeah. Well, I'm saying well, true, we yeah. need to make it illegal. Okay. Like, like if we can make, like, and this is pathetic, I know, yeah. okay? But if a governor can say, okay, from now on, all pastors have to submit their sermons to make sure there's no homophobic stuff in it. Right. All the pastors join together. They do press releases. They all stand sure. up. Yeah. All that, right? Why can't we do that with abortion? Okay. Why can't they stand up? Why can't they actually t tell the... Con Here's what they do. Yeah, we have lots of orphans. If you feel called to adopt a kid, there's a lot of need. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. Because... Because God doesn't call some people to act Christian. If there's orphans, you don't have a, a church this size or a church of 50 or 100 and have orphans before them and they go, no, 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 mm. I'm called to church parking lot ministry. Okay. I'm called to crisis pregnancy center. I'm, I, I, I do a really good job feeding homeless or I'm really good at a guitar. These kids need to be covered and taken care of and loved. Foster care systems, like your wife knows this, even the Christian, um, uh, ado uh, foster care agencies around here all right they the christian ones work with gays and lesbians mm -hmm. to place sure. boys in there right. all right i think they almost have to now. they do have to yeah, it's because right. it's our law right we live in a republic yeah. where we make the right. laws and that's acceptable who cries out about that nobody nobody cares so if you work for a christian uh, well, foster my wife care, didn't like that part but no, she's like but she puts up with tight. it right yeah so so if it was legal to eat babies <laughs> Like why? Right. Like you're a man. Yeah. You're, you're not a 15. Right. You're like me. You're like an older guy, right? Yeah. I'm we old. stand at the <laughs> gates, and we're supposed to protect the communities. We're supposed to protect these children. We're supposed to do what's right. Right. You know. But we, me more than you, grow fat in the day of slaughter. 
we shouldn't do that. We should stand up and oppose evil mm -hmm. and say to our pastors, look, we need to actually do something to make abortion illegal. Right, we can so do I'm this. I'm not disagreeing with your message, but I mean, maybe your method. Yeah, you don't like our tactic. Well, what, 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 what a famous man said, and he's not that famous because I don't remember it, but what he said was, I prefer my method over your non-method, over your yeah, right. apathy. Yeah, I understand right? that. So sh tell me what you do, and maybe if it's really effective, I'll do that, yeah. you know? But people like to give advice that don't do anything. Sure. And, and here's the thing. People like you, mm -hmm. like me, like to shine the light of Christ out, mm -hmm. but we never like anybody to shine it in. And repentance comes uh, okay. it, at the church first. Mm -hmm. His people, God's people. We can't convince evil, wicked people to change the law. Sure. But shouldn't we be able to convince godly men, people that follow God, that know the Bible, that understand it, that we should make it illegal? Yeah. It's murder. It's sin. You know, God actually hates it. He hates it. And we well, ignore I mean, it. I always be the first to admit that, you know, there's plenty of sin in the church. I mean, you look at the statistics on porn, usage among no. men in the church. No, just among pastors. So, just among pastors. Pastor. Go to Barna and look at the results. Okay. Barna is the one that all the pastors use as their quotes for, like, you know. Right, yeah. You know, and look at their, you know, pastors, they hate their job. Really? It's a miserable job. Okay. Yeah, they wouldn't recommend it that their sons do it. Okay. You know, they're burnt out, they're depressed, they don't have friends. I mean, Barna, if you look at what he says about pastors, now look, I'll tell you what, a man that serves God has joy, mm -hmm. right? But, but we have these 501c3s, they're corporations. He's not your pastor. Okay. He's not your pastor. You don't eat at his house, he doesn't pastor you. <laughs> I mean... In the sense of being a shepherd. Right. right okay. He's a speaker and an administrator. Right, yeah. He's the boss. Mm -hmm. He's the one with the chief seats. He sits in the chief seats. He gets the accolades. Okay. He's the honored man. It's not biblical. So what would you propose would be the change for the church? To be obedient to the word of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says this. Oh man, you know what you should do. Mm -hmm. You know what is right. God's telling you that. He's, in the Bible, it actually says those words. You know? But what people want to do is just, like, we're good. Well, I guess because well, I travel and so I see, you know, house churches and very small things i see big churches we do home church churches. we do a home church i mean i think you know god has all those ones and the easiest thing i find for me to do is to criticize the bride of christ because i can look at this church and go well you're doing this and this and i have to go you know ultimately they have to stand before the lord i have to yeah. live my life right if there's an opportunity to speak yep. into them yeah but you know so I used to be, I think, a lot more critical of the church when I was younger. <laughs> yeah. Well, Cause I, I felt like it's like this is the way the church should be, and I thought, you know, well, I mean, for some people, it floats their boat, and if they walk with Jesus, I'm happy. So, well, the the problem but I is my full time, my, my 40 years in you know full time ministry. So. Yeah. The problem is, is what's the fruit of the land? What's the fruit of the land? What's the fruit? of all these churches all these christians what's the fruit uh, in america actually a lot of good if you look at you know my wife and daughters in europe right now for a couple days and i'm like it's not doing well over there so i think you yeah, well know, you're talking about prosperity right no i just think there's a spiritual darkness in europe and you know there's i don't know if you've been to europe but it's just you know that it's the refuges of old catholic and protestant christianity without the spirit of god right. so i think in america i think you know i can look and go because i since i work with, yeah but how do you call uh, campus crusade for how Christ, do you justify you all the orphans and the number one cause of death is child sacrifice in well, texas think, and and the rest of the states I of the think union that's one of the problems that's not what i have devoted my life to but you know i respect you for doing that so I spent my whole life on a college campus telling students and professors about Jesus. I feel like that's ultimately the answer is that I'm not going to get these non-Christian students and professors probably to change their mind about abortion until, first of all, they come to know Christ. So right. That's and I, I do street evangelism. Okay. okay? So, and I, I love, love evangelism. But here's the one thing that most guys your age and my age get wrong. Like, the main thing. What's the main thing? They always say, because I don't want to trick you, sure. they always say, well, it's a great commission, it's sharing Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and it is not the main thing. What Jesus tells us what the main thing is. Love God with all your right. heart, your mind, your soul, and strength. And, and then, love your neighbor as yourself. 
that is the main thing because right. if you do those two things mm -hmm. you will share the gospel you right. will defend the innocent you will protect those that are being led to slaughter sure. but that's not what we do what we say is okay well we got to go out and tell people about jesus but we, we don't have that spiritual relationship with god where the spirit's in us and we're okay. listening to the spirit well i okay? think you know if you look in matthew 20 i think the great commit part of the, the great commission is teaching others so i think that yeah. whole thing of you know love god and love your neighbor i mean that that has to be part of our message in discipleship, right? Otherwise, well, we yeah, to... no doubt. Yeah, we don't. We're not going to skip that with them. But well, the thing is, is we got all <laughs> these can, Christians. It can be easy to make it about me, right? You can just be. Well, here, you know... here's the thing. We got. I'm not trying to convince unbelievers uh -huh. to act Christian. Okay. I'm trying to get believers to act Christian, and okay. I can prove they're not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because how can we have all these people? Like, I think probably. This church right here could adopt every single orphan in Texas. <laughs> this church probably could, just all by itself, right? How you doing, sir? I think the right. problem when you Mom say man. when pro-life is regulating abortion, it to is. me, pro-life is a movement trying to uphold the sanctity of life. Thought I gotta go to the hospital see my granddaughter. It's not about regulation. No, that's all they've ever done. They've only ever regulated. Only ever. Never I mean, once. Pro-life isn't a government entity, right? It's not no. a congressional. Pro-life, the words pro-life. Right. It's an opinion. I'm pro-life. You know who's pro-life? Mm -hmm. People that work in at Planned Parenthood. They say they're pro-life. They don't say they're pro-choice? No, they're pro-life. They're for really? life. Yeah. Okay, I would think they'd only say they're pro-choice. No, they're pro-life. they don't like There's abortion pro doctors right? who are pro-life. Okay. Okay, because they're for life. If you want to do that, I'll help you right. for your life. But I'm pro-life. They don't say, none of them say we want to kill, we're pro-abortion. Um, they don't say that. You know, they may say we live in a republic and people can choose. Right. As for me, in my household, we wouldn't do it, but if you do it, well, that's okay. Well, they redefine, uh, you know, the fetus as just part of the body without right. being a person, right? They redefine yeah. person. The pro-life movement, you're paying, like, um, like uh, um, Abby Johnson, if you wanted to come talk at your church, mm -hmm. 10 grand. Who's you have Abby to pay Johnson? She used to work at a uh, abortion clinic, oh, okay. and then she came out, okay. and became a Christian, and then became oh, a Catholic. Okay. Okay. And so... Um, but so all these pro-life leaders i hope he's with you and didn't, didn't just yeah nice. yeah <laughs> anyway. this yeah thanks for coming and talking sure. and being well, a you know i've worked my whole life with a group called campus crusade for christ so i always yeah. like to find out why people believe what they believe and so. here i got one of these for you too <laughs> okay so pray yeah. about it think about it we'll be here next sunday okay so. well i mean yeah i'll be out of town next Sunday, but i just i feel like that's the one point argument i think Part of, of people in pro-life is not to regulate abortion, but to see it eliminated. No, it's not because they've never done it. They never tried to do it, oh, and okay. they just want people to give them money. They okay. give us money. Well, I don't right? talk in terms of 